Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, we just say happy 2018. I should be crying. But I'm saying happy 2018. Because just because we go into a new calendar year doesn't mean that we started a new year, to be honest. It is our choice. It is my choice how 2018 is going to be. Why? What is it my choice? It's what? It's whatever God wills it. Oh, yeah, he already wrote his will. And it's in the Bible. And so I just want to encourage you. I'm excited about the new series, Change. And I love the word, I am able to change. But it's, it, the question is not, am I able to change? Do I want to change? Because there is a great price for change. I was thinking the other day, I said, well, you know, I, our church, if you've been here with us for like the last seven years, we are constantly changing. I mean, I don't look the same. I look younger every year. <laughs> <laughs> Because I declare it every year, right? You have to declare it. I told the Lord, I want to live unto up to 120 years. I want to be able to wear my heels. This heels, not like flats, no. And so according to your faith, it's not being vain because I want to finish. I'm not planning to uh, retire when I'm 80. When I'm 80, I want to be flying with Jesus, you know what I mean? So I just want to encourage you but. I I believe that I have a a perfect word from heaven. The only part is that I'm always making holes in these things. But I I want you to go to James. Because 2018, we said today is a 21 day fast, right? And I bet you it was really hard for you. Who started with us? I had nothing in the refrigerator. I opened it many times. And all I saw was water and butter, not even bread. I was tempted. No, I'm not going to say it. Uh, some people, well, okay, I was tempted. You know, I, every time I would go to Oaxaca, I, I bring a lot of, like, grasshoppers. I know that I, I made you eat a lot of them, right? Who, who, who did I make them eat? Thank you for being brave, right? But, you know, there's people that don't believe that that's, you know, that's uh, the Daniel's fast. I'm not doing the Daniel's fast. I'm doing my fast with God because I want to be closer to God. So I was like, I was so hungry. And I said, how about I just grab a bowl of grasshoppers, you know? That would be a change, right? And you add milk. And then you just eat it and you clean your tummy, you know. And then you won't be hungry the whole day. And the Lord said, no grasshoppers for you. So I did not eat the grasshopper to whoever I was talking to. I said they was going to be my protein, but I'm not going to do it. because Why? Because I love them too much. It's like chips for me. Uh, if they ever stop me at the AMC or at the Edwards, they're going to be like, what does she have here? It's a bag of grasshoppers. True story. Are you there yet, James? Okay. It says, my brothers and sisters, I want to include all of us. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. It will be given to him or her, but let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let, no, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in some ways. It says, like, you know, I love to read it. Like, it's so good to say, you know, I, yeah, count it all joy. You know, I, it's one of my favorite scriptures, but it's not one of my favorite scriptures to walk. Because we can say, count it all joy, count it all joy. What does count it all joy mean? It means consider it. 
think it, believe it, walk it, that the moment a chaos, the moment a problem hits your life is the moment, the first thing that I need to do is like, number one, count it all joy. But with the, and we're being, that's what we come to church, right, to learn. Okay, so in your, uh, in your timeline or in your life, since you've been with Christ or before Christ, whenever something, and it means a trial, it means, it says various trials. It doesn't say one thing. It means today you got this problem, they fire you, then you got, got repo. Then you went home and now your rent, your rent is laid and you, it adds to it. And then someone's sick and you're like, oh my gosh, how many? How many problems can I take in one day? But be, let's be honest, how many times the first thing that you said was, this is such an opportunity for me. What an opportunity. What? They hit my car in the parking lot. True story. When I went to the parking lot last month, I didn't count it all joy. I was like, where are the cameras? And then I started thinking, like, who did it, how they did it. Oh, if I would have been here. I'm going to take out my shoe, flung it. And then pray for them. That's a problem. It was a problem to me because now I have to buy a new hood in the hood because I can't afford it. And it's really expensive. So you see me driving when the hood all beat up. And every time I see it, I was like, joy. Not because I feel joy. It's because I have to train myself. I said, I said to myself, you know, as a church and personally for, for myself, and I'm talking, I'm preaching to myself, Virginia, if you want this year to change, if you, wanna, if you don't want to repeat 2017, then it's time to you to count the word of God how he says to count the word of God. And many of you know that my aunt went to heaven. And she was like my mother to me. But when someone passes... Because it doesn't say some trials. It says all trials, various, ki all kinds, all kinds of chaos are going to come to your life is a promise. We don't see it as a promise. No, no, no. I just like the good ones. No, no, no. It's a promise. It's, it, you know what? In life, we're not exempted from trials, tribulations, from loss, from pain, from disappointments. They are going to come. It's, it doesn't say if. They come. It says, when they come. Did you read that? It says, when you fall into various trials. When? It's not, it's not an if. And so to me, it has been a month of renewal. Okay, Virginia, yes. You know, I'm not saying do not grieve. I'm not saying do not know. No, I am going to grieve. I am going to cry. I'm going to cry whatever I want and however I want and where I want to. But I cannot forget that what is in, in this trial or in this situation or in this circumstance, what is the purpose of it? Because God don't, doesn't allow us to go through things just to go through things. He's not an aimless God. And I was having a really bad, a really bad moment. Not too long ago. Okay, yesterday, right? So, and I was talking to the Lord, okay, Lord, it's 2018. Uh, I, you know, you, you're so, you know, I'm not going to say you were silly, but I'm silly. I said, you need to give me strength. I need to stop crying. I need, and I went through my list, right? And my list was not positive. There was nothing good about my list. And then that's when he told me, Virginia, this is the moment that you need to find out. What a great opportunity you have to grow in this season. 
every trial, every problem, according to my word, is a great opportunity. It's full of possibilities. And he says, now what I want you to do is I want you to train your mind. You want to change? I want you to train your mind. You know what? I said, yes. And I said, how do I train my mind? I already know the word. You can quote the word. You have, have you met people that, oh my God, they are concordance. Well, the Bible said, well, let's break it in Hebrew. And blah, blah, blah. But you don't even leave it, nothing. You, I, I'm sorry, but there is not an ounce of transformation and change in their lives. Right? Because it's just knowledge. It's just like, it's knowledge. And God says this year he wants us to go deeper, to know him. That the moment we hit, well, every day, right? By the moment we hit any trial, any problem, any situation, we need the, the first thing that we need to do is like, okay, let me remind who is it that I am in Christ. Let me, let me do that. Let me go back to everything that I know, to everything that I have quoted. Now let me go back and let me remember who God is in my life. And like, you have to talk to yourself. I should pay myself. Because I gave myself 30 minutes. I was like, I'm counting. But you know how do I have to say, Virginia, God loves you. And I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, oh, my God, I look awful. You see the thoughts? God loves you. And God loves you. God is always with us always with us but when we hit the fan things right because we're christians but bad things you know is the moment that we have to recall and bring everything into remembrance of who god is and to say you know what no he loves me right now i feel so alone as a matter of fact, let's go, let's go up a notch. I feel lonely. Do you know how horrible it is to, be, to feel lonely when you're surrounded with people that love you, but you feel lonely? It's walking like a zombie. You're just like the motions, you know, like, yeah, God is good. Praise God. And, but you don't feel it. But see, it's not about a feeling. The Lord said to me, no, you feel lonely when you are disconnected from me. Because that's intimacy. Think about it. Think about marriage. When you feel lonely, you're married and you have children and everything, but you feel there's this lonely emptiness. It's because there is a disconnection. There's a little bit, maybe a little bit of communication that's, you know, you know, now it's, it's more, le you less communication. Now, the day after that, you go into silence. Then all of a sudden, no matter if your spouse or whoever, your children tell you that they're for you, that they love you, you still feel alone. And the Lord said to me, that's why we're being defeated whenever we, we encounter trials. Because the first thing we think is, oh, he left me. And if we have trust issues, which I think we all do, right? Or else he wouldn't say, trust me with all of your heart. Love me with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. He said, trust, trust, and trust, and trust. And that's a beautiful word unless you have to trust. Right? If I'm talking to you, no, sister, you have to trust God. Come on, sister. And we're good at the brother. Mighty man, oh God, trust God. And then it happens to you, you're like, he left me. Am I being honest? Am I the only one who thinks like that? Let's just expose every lie so we can win 2018. Because I want to win. I'm sick of it. I am tired of it, of everything that took place in 2018. But I decided to give thanks for everything that took place I'm sorry, in, in, in 2017. I'm going to give praise to God. I'm going to give thanks to God. And I'm going to see, I'm going to go back not to cry and not to live in regret and not to live in hatred. Oh, you name it. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to see God. I'm going to see his perspective in every little thing that happened to me.
And then I'm going to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because if this had whatever haven't take, didn't take place in my life, I wouldn't be stronger now. I wouldn't see the reality that I have in Jesus now. Is it fun? No. It is so painful. I was like, Lord, do you have like a, an epidural? Is that what you know? Because we're birthing, right? We're birthing new thoughts. We're birthing new dreams and all the things that God has given us. And you know what? In the kingdom of heaven, there are no epidurals. No, there's only you bloating and stretch marks and, you know, expanding, right? Like, men, you wouldn't understand, but the pain. But just think about when you break your, your, your toenail. Do you see how it hurts you? No, just kidding. No, just kidding. No. I did not say that. Lord, forgive me. I don't know what's painful for you guys. I don't know. You can talk to me afterwards. I'm going to read you another version because I love reading different versions. The same one. So the other one says that we're going to fall into various trials, right? This one says in the NIRV says facing. My brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. When you do, write it down. Please say, when you do, when I do, think of it as a pure joy. So I want you to reflect tonight and think about the problem that is sucking the life of Jesus out of you. We all have a problem. We just don't tell each other. But what's the problem that is, that is, is taking your joy, is taking your sleep, it's taking your hope. What is the problem? And then you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to face it. And I'm going to think about it as a pure joy. Pure joy. Whenever we start a problem, you know, I always say, we fight from victory. You know, it's all, we just have sayings. I, I love those sayings. Like, Virginia, you, you remember you're fighting from victory, not to get victory. But when I'm in the fight, I forgot that I'm fighting from this side. And all of a sudden, I'm on the other side. I'm playing and scoring on the other team. Because I forgot. You know why? Because I forgot who God is in the midst of my trials. And I forgot who I was and who I am in the midst of my trials. And that's the reality. That's the reality. Let's continue. It says, your faith will be tested. And what is it? We don't like tests. I don't like tests. You know, growing up, I didn't know that I had, um, God is healing me. And I'm able to, and I'm going to say it. I hardly ever said it. But, you know, I, I, I have uh, dyslexia. But, you know, dyslexia doesn't have me. I tell you why, because I'm able to, uh, I've been in accounting, and I see all the numbers are backwards, letters are backwards. Do you understand that? And that calls you to do something that, come on, can you give me something easy? Right? On top of that, color blind. And then, according to some people in the worship, tone deaf. So, you know what I mean? Like, what a pure joy. Pure joy, you know what? I said, it's pure joy. I tell you why. Because before I used to see it as a down. It's like, oh, what are, what are people going to think if I start saying, you know, dyslexia? No, don't say it. Sister, don't say it. No, that's the fact. But my reality in Jesus Christ is that I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly with him because he gives me the power to do so. I'm able to do what I cannot do on my own. I'm able to do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. So? I'd have to double check my work three times, four times, and sometimes ten times. But you know, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm becoming an expert. I have a good friend of mine that always laughs at me. Her name is Ari. <laughs> she sees me, what number? She's telling me the number. She's pastor five, and I'm there writing eight. So she has to check my work. I, the check, I have to check my work. She has to check my work. You know, you know how that feels? 
But then I said, like, wow, Lord, that you have given me the ability. That doesn't, see, that, that gives you freedom. It gives you freedom that I'm able to do things that others cannot do because I'm going to rely on the help of the Holy Ghost. And my faith will be tested. And your faith will be tested. It doesn't say, uh, might be. Hopefully you won't. No, it will be tested. Because God needs to know, you know, are you in or are you out? And believe me, a lot of times I've been out, squeezed out. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what is this green thing coming out of me? It wasn't faith. What verse? Am I on? You don't have to help me now? What? You guys have given me all these numbers and I can't even see them. Okay. So your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, when what happens? It will produce in you the strength to continue. So if you quit it, you will never, will never finish whatever God asked you to do. And you must allow this strength to finish its work. You can stop. You go to take the test. And when it gets hard, you go. You stop. You know what? This is too much. I, I heard my husband saying, like, I, he used to take a test. I don't know because I didn't grow up here when I was little. So this is bubble gum, bubble gum. I was just, you know, because I was so, so like, Christian. No, no, Christian. But I would be like, in the nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Ave Maria, Madre de Dios. I was like, I, I was doing the rosary, you know, like, true story. Por mi pecado, por mi pecado en el tercero. Okay, this is it. I never passed them because I was so, I never knew that I had that problem. So when you have dyslexia and you're reading, you're reading what you're not reading. And when you're planning to bubble the B, you're, you're doing the C. And no wonder. And am I like, Lord, you showed me that in my 30s. Dang, I could have been a brilliant, you know, if I would have known. I would have worked really hard. But anyways, that's another story. I would call it the brilliant life of a child of God. It says, you will have everything. No, no, no. This is finished the work. Then you will be all what you should be. You want to be all you should be in Christ, then finish the test. Get out of detention. Because when you don't do your work, they send you to detention, right? And then if you don't do that, then they send you to those little schools where all those kids are there that don't know nothing. I mean, if you're there, you can get out of there and go back to school. With all my heart, I'm saying this. So if you finish your school in one of those places, uh, I love you. Go to college and finish what God gave you to do. If I was able to pass and I had to translate Everything that I wrote in Spanish, I had to translate it in English. What's your excuse? Right? Okay, just saying. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. But what is it that we tend to run when we need uh, wisdom, when we need something like, I don't know what to do, or this is too hard for me? Who do we run to first? We run to a friend, or we run to a leader, we run to a pastor, which is good. But the first person that we need to run is the Holy Spirit because he lives with us. And I'm teaching to myself because sometimes the first thing, I want to call my friend. I want to call someone who's going to hug me and love me. And, but I need to go back to the word of God. No, the first one that I need to call and go is to ask the Holy Spirit to show me, okay, out of this trial, why am I going to learn? What are my possibilities? Why are you teaching me that? I need you to be kind. But why? So you can represent me on this earth and we can win the lost. Right? Okay, where am I again? See, I lost my thought. What number? Oh, you guys are not helping me. But I forgive you. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find what? Do you know that he's never going to tell you you're so dumb? Have you ever said that to yourself? I'm just stupid. You know that that's not God speaking to you. I'm the dumbest. I should have seen it coming. I should have ordered a, That is not God speaking and it's not the Holy Ghost speaking. That's your own spirit speaking. That's the old self speaking. That's your old nature having a heyday in our lives. 
But when you ask, you must believe, you must not doubt. That's because a person who doubts, it's like a wave of the sea that wind blows and tosses them around. They shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. So why are we expecting and we do the same thing? Why am I expecting to walk in victory? Why am I expecting to have joy when I don't even consider it? I don't care about it. I don't consider God about it. I am just in a panic mode. I just whipping. I, I, I'm just being a mess. Why says it's going to throw you. It's going to, it's telling you. I'm going to, I have this thing here. You know I don't know how to swim, right? Who knows that I don't know how to swim? Well, if you know it, but I'm brave. You know, I go and I go to the beach and I take this thing. You know, especially if I go to Hawaii, because the water is, like, very mellow, right? So I'm never afraid, ever afraid. I just get in, and I'm, like, it doesn't even cross my mind. I count it all joy, and I start, and I'm not going to think about, you know, sharks. Just think about, you know, fishes that are pretty, you know. I'm closing with this. So not too long ago, I said, well, I, I go back to this word, right, being tossed to and fro. I'm like, okay. So they said, let's go to a lazy river. I was like, lazy river? That's not even compared to the ocean. Sign me up. They said, it's going to be fun. Virginia, all you have to do is put it on. And if you want, just take out your legs. And, and, and the lazy river is just going to take you, right? And I was kind of concerned because it was really kind of loose, you know, when it didn't have enough air, right? So I started good for the, because it's like a three-hour thing, right? By the way, my husband left me. <laughs> Why? Because his thing punctured. He couldn't be there. So it's like, hey, hey, I see you on the other side. I hope not of heaven. <laughs> so I was like, and it was pretty good. It was good, you know, like there I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, I don't even need a, uh, a vest. But my husband said, just put the vest on. I was like, I don't need it. Who needs it in a lazy river, right? And all of a sudden, we were with other people. They all, the current just went wild. And I'm like, what is this? So now I'm like this, right? Like that thing for two hours, it tossed me. I went like... It's in heaven recorded. I was so embarrassed because there was people that saw me from far. My, my team was gone. My husband was like resting, you know. And then it flipped me. At, I, I don't know how many times. I thought I was going to die. And if you don't know, and they, they, they tell you, just relax. Hey, I don't know how to swim. I don't even know how to relax. So I was upside down. And the current was like, I, oh, my God, it's so embarrassing. I came out like that, and the thing was pushing me. And people are seeing me thinking, that woman is nuts. Get on the raft. And I'm like, if I could, I would. <laughs> I was like, my heart, I was like having almost a heart attack. L literally, like, I was like, oh, my God, Jesus, Heavenly Father, you know, forgive me for any sin that I ever committed that I don't even know. You know? I didn't count it all joy. Please, Lord, please. And I was begging. You know, you don't have to beg God, but I was like, okay. And I'm literally underwater, but the good thing is that it had a little, like, mesh here. So I'm, the water is here. The current, I don't know, because people are just going trying to help me. But from far away, they can't come to, to, to help me. They're just like, I didn't even know what they were saying. All I was like this. I'll show you. There's the mesh here, right? So I'm like, they could see me. I was like, <laughs> like oh. and I was like, Lord, tell my children that I love them. <laughs> Deal with my husband because he left me. He could have go off. No, I was like, oh, I was so upset. Like, I didn't count it all joy. 
It took me like 20 minutes to finally like, and I was in the middle and there's all these rocks that throw you and toss you around. And I, I went like this with my thing. I wouldn't let it go. All these people are watching me. Who knows? Maybe I'm on YouTube. You go find it. Crazy lady in Colorado. And I'm like this and like that. And I finally, finally I was able to get a, a hold of a branch and I sat on it, right? And I was like, Jesus, please. And they said, it's just another hour. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm just going to hold on. And I'm going to trust you. And the thing threw me over and over. And I was, I think the embarrassment was the worst. Because at the end, I finally made it. And then when I passed, because I, the, I mean, I'm telling you, that current was so fast that they're like, be, be good, be good. Like the people were like wishing me well. And I'm not lying to you. And they had kids, then they were fine. And I was like, <laughs> underwater, coming out of the water. I came back all bruised, like somebody beat me up. And at the end, they said, okay. And they said, well, you're going to see this place. And that's when you get off, get, get out of the river. Like, I was like, I'm sure there's people there ready to help you. I'm passing by, and the thing is now, like, I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And so this person that was with us, hey, bye. I'm like, dude, I can't get out. And then I said, okay, I need to make a decision. I need to get off this thing. And I'm in the middle. And there's like hundreds of people watching me. People don't even help you. Probably they thought I was playing around or I was drunk or something like that. Because I was like, I took it out and I'm holding this thing up. And now the water is here. And I won, won 1,000. I spent like, it took me 20 minutes to get out. When I got out, I just kind of fainted because I was so shaky. And then they saw us, and then this person said, we saw you. You did good. You fought to the end. I wanted to, like, fought to the end. I was like, didn't you see I was dying? I drank so much water. I was so cold. And then my husband comes, like, how was it? I said, who told you this was a lazy river? And then the person next to us said, oh, no, this is a, a five. But I survived. Praise Jesus. So what's the lesson? The lesson is that when we fall into various trials, the waters are going to be very, very bad. And a little tube is not going to save you. Is not going to save you. The only one that can sustain you is the word of God. The only one that can sustain you is the Holy Spirit. The only one that can give you wisdom is the Holy Spirit. How I got out of that river was like, okay, I, I, I went to the Holy Spirit and I said, please, t please tell me how to get out. Because the thing was taking me. And they said, it takes you to another river, who knows where. And I was like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And then for a moment, I said, just release. Let go of your floaty. And I was like, but that's my safety. I don't know how to swim. I had to release that thing so I can grab a branch. And I was like, why? What is it? The ball in the movie? Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> I should have wrote my name on it. <laughs> They would have known and it was me thinking they can find me. You see what I'm thinking? And I said, and I went like this. Like, and I'm telling you, it should be on YouTube because I was like this. And it would throw me and it was like that. And then I said, no, I need to go to the side like a crab. And when I, when I get up, people are clapping like, yeah. I wanted to bless them. And I was so pissed. That's the word. I'm sorry. But like people have no empathy. They see you drowning and they think it's fun. And anyways, then I have another story. But that's for next, next Wednesday. Okay, so what, what are points to take? I'm going to give you a few points. 
You need to check yourself today. Where are you? What is the trial that is drifting you, that is making you change your mind? Because God is not a God of confusion. Do you know that? So if God is not a God of confusion, who's a confused one? You are. I am. The devil is the father of all lies. The confusion, we do it ourselves. Because we open doors. Because we forget who he is. So point number one. I should call it a bullet point better. For you to. Okay, what's your reason and problem that you're dealing with? And write it down. What was your first reaction? How did I react it? Okay, I'm going to wear my ugly glasses. What was your starting point? Did you start it in the positive? Okay, this is my opportunity. This I need to, there's something here to learn. God wouldn't allow this unless there's something for me to profit. There's always profit. There's always fruit. There's always above and beyond with God so what is it that I need to learn and that I need to pass this test and then I need to experience in this particular situation check yourself was I joyful and or was I negative negative? and you know make a list grab a piece of paper and then do do everything that you think about your situation and write it like if it's negative and be honest like be honest don't be like no, be honest. Can we be brutally honest? I have fear. I think I'm going to die. But whatever. You write it. But then you write it. How does God view it? If I'm supposed to count it all joy. How, does, how am I going to counteract what he is telling me? Okay, so if it's fear, it's love. Because perfect love casts out all fear. If it's lack... You know, God wants me to learn something. Yes, go get a job. Sometimes we're praying, Lord, send me. No, 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 you go get a job. What do you want me to do? Maybe he wants you to be diligent. He wants you to be patient. You know, the, de the devil has not even one fruit of the spirit. He, he hates it when we're patient. It's like, my gosh, this woman has been waiting for five years. Yes, and I shall continue. That's what you should say. And he pisses him off. Okay, it makes it, it really mess him up. Three. What should be your initial expectation? You need to expect not only victory, but you need to expect that out of this, I'm going to come out strong. And out of this, I'm going to be perfect. He just wants me to be complete and perfect in him. This is such a great opportunity for me. This is such a great possibilities. The possibilities that you're going to have this year are going to be so many. So many. But there either can be possibilities or they could be problems. So you need to change your perception and the way that you view your trials. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.